Hello everybody, one more time. My name is Alex Centeno. And in this exciting tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to delete a difficult person. A difficult person to delete, not a difficult person. Although if the person wasn't difficult, you probably wouldn't want to delete them from your photo. Anyways, um, basically, let's say that uh, you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend you end up going on a trip and having great photos and then all of a sudden uh, you want that person gone from your photos and maybe from your life. Uh, I can give you some advice on how to remove the person from your photos and uh, if it's an easy subject against a consistent background then Photoshop 21 has um, already all sorts of automated tools that can do that for you. Uh, so this tutorial is going to be more for the advanced user uh, when you have a very complex uh, background and uh, it's not as easy to just select and then go from there. So let's get to it. All right, here I am in Photoshop 21 and I have a photo by Ellen Hughes uh, at pexels.com. Thank you so much for providing this photo for our tutorial today. We are going to be getting rid of this guy from this photo. And uh, first things first, let's go ahead and duplicate our layer, Command J. Let's rename this one copy. And uh, let's call this one base. All right, uh, select copy. And then let's start by roughly selecting our subject, select subject, and that should do a pretty good job. But you can see that it's not perfect. Let's start by deselecting her. All right, so we're going to be subtracting polygonal, lasso tool and let's get to it uh, like always you can just uh, press forward if you want to just avoid this part uh, basically what I'm doing is selecting her to deselect her from the mask from the selection all right, so all I'm doing is really selecting her to deselect her from the selection that is selected in the selection. All right, um, now adding to the selection, let's go ahead and roughly add a couple of the parts that were missed here of the hat, like so. That looks pretty good. And uh, it seems like it missed a little bit here as well. So let's add that. All right. And uh, this part as well. All right. And uh, let's undo this part. Rough mask at this point. All right, it looks pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good selection of him. Of course, it's not perfect. You can see a couple of things that are not perfect, but I am going to move to a different method here of selection, which is the brush. I'm going to press Q. This brings my selection into the quick mask mode. And then with the brush, I can just paint in white. So opacity 100% normal, a soft brush. So if I click, you see the hardness is to zero. Opacity 100, flow 100, and I have my brush selected with the white color. I can just press the open bracket to reduce the size of my brush. And I'm just uh, painting with white 
to refine the parts of the image that are actually selected. So anything that needs to be in the selection, I paint to remove that pink. And uh, anything that doesn't need to be selected, I paint with black. You can at any moment press Q again to see how it's selecting and look pretty good. Let's go back here to deselect here this part of the shirt. That's looking great. This is part of the selection. It's looking good there. It's not perfect. And like you can see, I'm doing a kind of a fast job around not being too perfect. Just a general selection will do. Okay, that looks pretty good. Excellent. Now the selection is around him. Let's go now to edit and content aware fill. Press that. This is going to open up a pane. To the right, we have a preview of how it's going to be filled. And you can see that it looks terrible. So in the green, you see what areas are being used for uh, the fill. So if I click, you'll see that I am deselecting some areas. So I'm just going to deselect altogether this part because I don't want uh, the part of his body to be filled with the bridge or the boat. So I'm going to deselect all this. I don't want her to be used as the source for, um, for the fill of his body. So I'm going to just deselect her as well. Uh, that's looking a little better, but still all sorts of boats in there. Let's remove the boats. That's a little bit better. A lot of sky. So let's remove some sky. That's a lot better. Uh, let's remove a little bit of this to see if that helps. That's looking a little better. That looks pretty good. I think it could do a better job around here. So let's try to get a little bit better sample around this area to see if it does better in this area. But if not, then we'll fix it in the next step. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I am not sure that we're going to get a lot better than that. Um, Yeah. All right. So we get it pretty close. And uh, by pretty close, what I mean is like looking somewhat OK. Let's hit OK and let's take a look. So now you can see we have obviously still a little bit of a, uh, an accent where he was. So he hasn't disappeared from our lives, but uh, it's better. At least we don't know who he is. So we're halfway there. Let's go ahead and use the stamp tool, clone stamp tool, increase our size a little bit. And then we're going to start going around copying pixels that are close by. So I'm going to be a little bit farther away and then copying those pixels. So I position myself, then option key, click once, and then just go around. Uh, my brush is at 100% opacity, so make sure that you select that as well. Because otherwise, you're going to get a little bit of ghosting. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's remove this tree uh, as we go. And uh, that's looking good. And uh, a good technique here is to select pixels 
that are adjacent in a horizontal line. So you see the line here of the water. So I'm going to select exactly the line of the water and replicate those to the right. But sometimes, as you can see, I'm replicating his shirt. So I need to uh, kind of delete that as I go as well. All right, that's looking better. All right, that's looking great. And uh, we have to continue to do that all, all along. All right, uh, this part is a little bit more. So instead of cloning all of this, let's just copy the whole thing like so. I'm going to create a new layer, paste, and uh, reposition that however it fits best, like so. That's looking pretty good. And then let's um, clean it up. So same thing, clone. I'm gonna merge this a lot easier to do that. So I'm just gonna select them both, right click, merge layers, and continue working as I was before. All right, that's looking pretty good. Hmm. This doesn't match here, so let's go ahead and clean up. All right. So basically the process is just selecting pixels and then uh, cloning them to the right or to the left. So you select pixels and then you clone them to hide the edge that, uh, that the outline left. 
I am constantly pressing my option key. And uh, yeah, and as you can see, this process is time consuming and not extremely fun, but um, there's simply no better way. Like you're not going to get an automated tool that actually can detect um, the full background person and decide, okay, this is going to go, this is going to stay. Artificial intelligence is getting better, but still you're going to have all sorts of problems with um, complex backgrounds. So that's why we need to do it manually. All right, this is looking okay. This is looking pretty good. Uh, I would say like around here is a problem. So let's go ahead and fix that. So select and click. and uh, also let's copy this bridge to continue here so I'm gonna select a little bit bigger and try to match where the bridge should be All right, that's looking pretty good. All right, let's take a look. It's looking good. Let's go ahead and clean up a little bit of the blue hues here in the sky. All right, that looks pretty good. I would say there's a little bit of shadow here where it didn't do a good job. So let's go ahead and reduce our opacity and uh, do the same but uh, with a little bit less opacity to hide the transition there. All right, that's looking pretty good. So that's the process. The process is copy, pasting the areas to hide them by using the pixels that are adjacent to the stroke that uh, was left behind all right so that's first step that's looking pretty good um, but because we ended up copying a lot of pixels then the actual grain is disturbed and so uh, we have two problems we have the problem that we have some jagged edges for example you can see the natural edges here and then you have this where both pixels were meeting uh, the pixels of the person next to her and then her pixels and now this looks a little bit too harsh so let's fix that by going to our extra um, tools and from here we're going to select our blur tool all right and with that we just select those pixels and we just blur anything that looks a little bit too sharp or too um, the edge looks a little bit too unnatural for example here this doesn't look natural because there's a, trans a harsh transition between uh, this and here you can see almost like a step so let's go back to this let's select this section and make our brush smaller and uh, here is our transition so let's try to 
make that a little bit softer of a transition, a little bit more opacity maybe. And there you go. Now we have a little bit softer transition. Let's do again some blur. And that's looking pretty good. All right. So we do that in the transition just to make sure that any pixels that should be, you know, um, soft are taken care of. Second, let's add a layer of noise uh, so that we match the original grain of the photo. So we do that by going to adjustment layers, solid color, 50% gray. So I'm just going to select here 50. That's a 50% gray, hit OK. And let's go and uh, rasterize this by right clicking rasterize layer, change it to blending mode overlay. And so now nothing happens, see, it's a transparent layer because it's 50% uh, gray in overlay mode. But now what we're going to do is add filter, noise add noise we're going to select uniform although you could use caution if you want but about 50 percent is fine for this particular image but try to match the natural grain that you are seeing in the photo and uh, just keep the monochromatic checked hit ok and now we have a little bit more of a natural transition because now the noise is uniform so we didn't interrupt the uh, the texture, the original texture is not interrupted anymore. And so it doesn't really show that we copied the pixels side to side. Uh, next would be to hide the transitions of color. So in this particular image, we have an area of highlight in the water here. You can see that our water here is a little bit darker. Uh, so naturally, this is more uniform than uh, if we had, for example, this transition uh, happening a lot more uh, quickly in this area right here. But it doesn't happen for us in here, so it's not as noticeable. But in some pictures, you're going to have uh, even more difficult backgrounds where uh, the transitions or gradients are more pronounced exactly where you're trying to delete. So. In other words, the person doesn't want to go and uh, we need to get them to go. So uh, to do that, let's add a lookup table. So adjustment layer, color lookup. And from here, let's select the Fuji Eterna 250 3510. It comes default with Photoshop. Adjust the opacity to taste. 45 seems okay before, after, before, after. What does this do? A color lookup table is going to transform the colors of our image, but it transforms them uniformly. So it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't think, oh, okay, these pixels are just coming from noise. These ones are coming from an image, so I'm just gonna change them differently. No, it, it actually makes it uniform. So if there's a color, it calculates it in a table and then changes it for another color. So as long as we're very close in colors, then it makes a uniform transition of those colors. And now it hides a little bit of the imperfections that we may have introduced with changing of hues, of changing of brightness, uh, in uh, basically filling our subject in the place where he wasn't or in the place where he was and now he isn't and will never be. So anyways, uh, so let's uh, group all these effects. We can move them to a group layer. Let's call this one um, guy and let's give it a nice red color. All right, so now we can just appear him and disappear him, appear him, and disappear him. Recap, first step, select the subject, very simple. 
second step, kind of clean up the mask a little bit so that you don't start from a very bad place. Third, do the fill so that the content aware is actually selecting the areas of the image that better suit that particular area. Uh, next, go ahead and clean it up. You're going to have a lot of edges, so you can uh, clean it up with a couple of techniques that we saw. Next, add the texture by adding noise. Next, add a color lookup table and you are done. I hope that you have found this interesting, that it has helped you. If you think that this was helpful, please consider subscribing or uh, hitting like or adding a comment to our video below. And uh, until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.